Hello, welcome to another video from the Animal University channel. Let's go for the video. Tibetan Mastiff This still primitive Tibetan Mastiff dog breed was developed centuries ago in Tibet. Originally used as guard dogs for livestock and property, Tibetan Mastiffs can still be found performing that role, but they also enjoy life as family companions and show dogs. Despite their massive, intimidating size, these pups are big softies when it comes to their human families. They retain their guardian nature, though, so strangers must beware, and introductions from trusted humans go a long way. Adapts well to apartment living. 1. Contrary to popular belief, small size doesn't necessarily an apartment dog make. Plenty of small dogs are too high energy and yappy for life in a high-rise. Being quiet, low energy, fairly calm indoors, and polite with the other residents are all good qualities in an apartment dog. And you can find an awesome crate for your dog here to give them a little more personal space in your apartment. Tolerates hot weather. 2. Dogs with thick, double coats are more vulnerable to overheating. So are breeds with short noses, like bulldogs or pugs, since they can't pant as well to cool themselves off. If you want a heat-sensitive breed, your dog will need to stay indoors with you on warm or humid days, and you'll need to be extra cautious about exercising your dog in the heat. Intelligence 5. Dogs who are bred for jobs that require decision-making, intelligence, and concentration, such as herding livestock, need to exercise their brains, just as dogs who are bred to run all day need to exercise their bodies. If they don't get the mental stimulation they need, they'll make their own work usually with projects you won't like, such as digging and chewing. Obedience training and interactive dog toys are good ways to give a dog a brain workout, as are dog sports and careers, such as agility and search and rescue. More about, about this breed. With his noble appearance, long coat, appealing colors, and beautiful tail, the Tibetan Mastiff is sure to be a conversation starter and traffic stopper as you walk him down the street. But if that's all you're looking for in a dog, this is not the breed for you. Before considering the drawbacks, here's what we love about this breed. The Tibetan Mastiff is loving, gentle, patient, and understanding. His centuries of working closely with humans have made him very sophisticated in the ways he understands people. He's a hard worker, protective of his family, fearless, and loyal. His large size and substance makes him a wonderful guard dog, and centuries of breeding for that specific task has perfected him as a protector. As attractive as that sounds, it's essential to weigh carefully the other qualities that can make him a challenging proposition. This is an independent guardian breed who will not always look to you for guidance. He will enjoy your company and bond with you, but he won't always obey you, especially in a situation in which he believes he's right. The Tibetan Mastiff is stubborn and usually doesn't do well in obedience or agility competitions. Tibetan Mastiffs are generally quiet dogs when their needs and living conditions are met, but if left outdoors at night, they can be barkers. Of course there's an easy solution, bring your dog inside. If you use a yard, make sure it's well fenced, Tibetan Mastiffs have been known to climb fences to escape. And be sure not to leave these dogs outside for very long because they may start to dig and become territorial and aggressive. Under certain conditions, Tibetan Mastiffs are tolerant with children in their own families, especially if raised with them. But they're generally not well suited to homes with young children. Tibetan Mastiffs can mistake the yelling, screaming, and playing of visiting children as a sign of aggression and often won't allow your child's friends to come visit. This territorial drive can affect not only your children's social life, but also your own. If you are a social person with many people coming and going, this breed is probably not for you, as the Tibetan Mastiff may try to limit the number of people allowed into the house. Socialization is essential for this breed. It's important to take your Tibetan Mastiff puppy and adult dog to as many dog-friendly stores, parks, and events as possible. Let him meet new people, but understand if he's wary of specific people. Tibetan Mastiffs have a strong instinct concerning people, and if they don't get over their initial dislike of a particular person, there's usually a reason. Tibetan Mastiffs cannot be walked off leash and should be taken on several different routes during their daily walks to prevent them from becoming territorial of their walking route. The Tibetan Mastiff can be a wonderful breed for the proper owner and home, but he can't fit into just any lifestyle. 
If you're interested in this breed, do your homework and talk to breeders and other Tibetan Mastiff owners. One thing is certain, if you do acquire a Tibetan Mastiff, your life is sure to be an interesting adventure with this beautiful, loyal companion. Highlights Be mindful, be mindful that your small, cute teddy bear of a puppy will grow into a 75 to 160 pound dog. The Mastiff's size makes him unsuited for apartment living. Tibetan Mastiffs are usually active in the morning and evening. If your schedule doesn't allow you to exercise them during these times, this may not be the breed for you. They are generally calm indoors. The Tibetan Mastiff should not be left to live outside. He's a companion dog and thrives in the presence of his family. Because of his protective nature, a Tibetan Mastiff should never be walked off leash. Vary his walks so he doesn't become territorial over a specific route. Tibetan Mastiffs are highly intelligent, independent, and stubborn, yet sensitive to human moods. They will become upset if you yell at or discipline your children or argue with your spouse. They enjoy your company but are never fawning. This is not the breed for people who wish to compete in dog sports such as agility or obedience. Tibetan Mastiffs who are left outdoors at night will bark to let you know they're on the job, so don't leave them outdoors at night. On the upside, they are generally quiet during the day. Tibetan Mastiffs shed little, except for once a year. Uh, they require weekly brushing, except during their seasonal shed, when they should be brushed more frequently. The Tibetan Mastiff needs early socialization that should continue throughout his life. Without it, he can be inappropriately aggressive toward dogs and people he doesn't know. Socialization helps him learn discrimination, which is essential for a guardian breed. The Tibetan Mastiff is not recommended for a timid or first-time owner. This breed needs a confident trainer who is consi consistent and firm but also loving. The Tibetan Mastiff is strong-willed and will test whether you really mean what you say. Tibetan Mastiffs can become bored without proper physical and mental stimulation. This can lead to destructiveness, barking, and other negative behaviors. If you're interested in owning a Tibetan Mastiff, please bear in mind that you'll lose at least a few items to his sharp teeth before he reaches 3 years of age. Tibetan Mastiffs can do well with children if they're raised with them, but they can mistake the yelling, screaming, and playing of children as a sign of aggression that requires action on their part. They may not warm up to neighborhood kids. They are not recommended for homes with young children. Never buy a Tibetan Mastiff from a puppy mill, a pet store, or a breeder who doesn't provide health clearances or guarantees. Look for a reputable breeder who tests her breeding dogs to make sure they're free of genetic diseases and of sound temperament. History The Tibetan Mastiff originated, where else, in Tibet. Like so many breeds, he has little documented history from before the late 19th century, but he's believed to have been around for many centuries. DNA evidence tells us that Mastiff-type dogs originated in Tibet some 5,000 years ago, and the Tibetan Mastiff is no doubt a descendant of those dogs. They developed into two types, the Dukai, who lived in villages or traveled with nomadic shepherds and functioned as flock guardians, and the larger Sankai, which were often given to lamaseries, where they served as guardians for the Tibetan Buddhist monks, or lamas, who lived there. Little is known of the, the Tibetan Mastiff before 1800. In 1800, a Captain Samuel Turner mentioned the use of huge dogs in his memoir, an account of an embassy to the court of the Teshu Lama in Tibet, but he gave no description of them. In 1847, the first dog from Tibet was imported to England and given to Queen Victoria as a gift from Lord Hardinge, the Viceroy of India. In 1873, England's Kennel Club was formed and the Tibetan Mastiff was officially entered into the stud book as the Tibetan Mastiff, leaving its earlier title as Large Dog from Tibet behind. In 1874, the Prince of Wales, who later became King Edward VII, imported two more Tibetan Mastiffs to England and they were shown in 1875 at the Alexandra Palace Show. Tibetan Mastiffs continued to be imported occasionally into England and Europe, and the first Tibetan Mastiff Breed Club was formed in 1931. World War II put an end to breeding, and it wasn't until 1976 that English breeders began importing the dogs again. The breed had a similar history in the United States. The late 1950s saw two Tibetan Mastiffs given to the President of the United States, but the dogs were taken to a farm and vanished from public scrutiny. 
It wasn't until 1970 that several more Tibetan Mastiffs were imported into the United States and they became the foundation dogs of the United States line. The Tibetan Mastiff Club of America was founded in 1974, as was the American Tibetan Mastiff Association. The first show that the Tibetan Mastiffs appeared in was the first national specialty match in October 1979. The breed was only recently recognized by the American Kennel Club as a member of the working group in January 2007. Today, in Tibet, it's difficult to find a purebred Tibetan Mastiff, but occasionally one can be found traveling with caravans and traders, and guarding livestock and homes. Size A male Tibetan Mastiff stands at least 26 inches tall at the shoulder and weighs in the vicinity of 100 to 160 or more pounds, females are at least 24 inches tall at the shoulder and weigh 75 to 125 or more pounds. Personality The word challenging is frequently applied to this independent, stubborn breed. He's intelligent and has a strong sense of self, expecting to be treated as an equal, not as a pet. He wants to please his people, but he also has his own agenda and must often be reminded of what he's been asked to do. The Tibetan Mastiff is a loyal family guardian who takes his job seriously and is aloof or reserved towards strangers. Early socialization that continues throughout his life will help prevent him from becoming territorially aggressive. Enrolling him in a puppy kindergarten class is a great start. Inviting visit visitors over regularly and taking him to busy parks, stores that allow dogs, and on leisurely strolls to meet neighbors will also help him polish his social skills. Health Tibetan Mastiffs are generally healthy, but like all breeds, they can be subject to certain health conditions. Not all TMs will get any or all of these diseases, but it's important to be aware of them if you're considering this breed. Care The Tibetan Mastiff is a companion dog who should live indoors, with access to a large, securely fenced yard where he can exercise. A small yard or dog run isn't sufficient for his needs. His heavy coat makes him unsuited to life in a hot, humid climate, although he can tolerate dry heat. During hot weather, he should always have access to shade and fresh water whenever he's outdoors. The Tibetan Mastiff's exercise requirements can be satisfied with 20 to 30 minutes of play in the yard or a half-hour walk. He'll enjoy having another dog to play with, preferably one who comes close to his size. Tibetan Mastiff puppies grow more quickly than smaller breeds, but they aren't physically mature until they're more than a year old. To prevent orthopedic damage, limit exercise to free play in the yard and avoid long walks until your puppy is a year old. Begin training the day you bring your Tibetan Mastiff puppy home. They are intelligent and learn quickly, but their independent and stubborn nature means that strict and formal obedience training doesn't bring the best results. Be patient, firm, and consistent to develop the strongest bond with your Tibetan Mastiff. Always look for behaviors you can reward instead of punishing him for infractions. Regular training practice and social interaction will help ensure that you live together happily. A bored or lonely Tibetan Mastiff is more destructive and noisy than you can imagine. House training comes easily to the Tibetan Mastiff. Crate training assists in this process and prevents your puppy from chewing on things he shouldn't or otherwise getting into trouble when you aren't around to supervise. A crate also gives him a safe haven where he can retreat when he's feeling overwhelmed or tired. A crate should never be used as a punishment. Leash training is also important, especially since your Tibetan Mastiff will eventually weigh up to 160 pounds or more and be able to pull you where he wants to go. Tibetan Mastiffs should never be walked off leash and having good leash manners is essential to both the state of your muscles and your happiness. Socialization is a must for this breed. Not only can Tibetan Mastiffs be overly dominant toward other dogs, they tend to become overly protective of their home and family. Puppy socialization classes are a great start, but socialization shouldn't end there. Visit many different dog-friendly stores, parks, and events. Invite different people to your home on multiple occasions so your Tibetan Mastiff learns that others can come onto your property and his territory. With the proper training, consistency, and socialization, your Tibetan Mastiff can be a wonderful family member who guards, protects, and loves you unconditionally. I hope you enjoyed this video enough and it was informative. Please like the video and subscribe the channel. Introduce us to your friends. Good luck to you all.